<clears throat> Lazy Sundays, am I right? They do have their appeal, don't they? What have you been up to in there all this time? Oh, nothing really. My next video is done, so I was just making animated GIFs. The last one I made is of Balky from Perfect Strangers. It's awesome. Hey, sweetheart. When are you going to use it? I don't know. An opportunity will present itself at some point. What if it doesn't? Does it bother you that you may have just made a GIF that you'll never have a reason to use? No, because I have faith. Faith in what? In knowing that every GIF's intended moment will come. If only I will remain attentive and wait. What's he listening to? I'm not sure. He didn't say. I don't even want to know. It's probably Timothy Treadwell's death tape or something. I can hear you. Hey, buddy. I was just wondering what you were listening to. It is a recording of myself performing Hamlet's soliloquy at the conclusion of Act Two. Why are you listening to a recording of yourself? To grade myself and make notes which might guide the improvement of my performance. Well, don't you find it distracting to do it with other people around? Wouldn't you rather do it in your room? Nine, I am also practicing screening out irritating distractions. I see. All right, carry on. I shall. You do the same. So if I can go back to your faith in an animated GIF destiny for a moment? <laughs> okay. What if that GIF's moment never comes? It will, though. But what if it doesn't? That's not the way it works. Why should I try to answer a question about something that's never going to happen? Or never not going to happen? It's a philosophical question. If you make an animated GIF that you never have an opportunity to use, does the existence of that GIF have a meaning? Well, I mean, of course it has a meaning. Things can have meanings whether they get used for a particular purpose or not. Oh, I feel the same way. I would even argue that things with no particular purpose whatsoever can still have a meaningful existence, which I'm sure you'd agree with as well. Definitely. I. Wait, why did you say it like that? Like what? You're sure I'd agree with it, like you're including me in that things with no particular purpose thing. Well... Are you saying my life has no purpose? No, no, not at all. I've just noticed that you haven't had as much going on this year as the rest of us. I have too. You just spent several hours at your computer making animated GIFs. So? It's Sunday. My work is done for the moment. What have you been doing all morning? Before you walked in, I was reading an article about how the Washington Post has had to invent a whole new category of its Pinocchio rating system to account for the sheer volume of lies told by Donald Trump. And that's more purposeful than what I was doing? That wasn't my point. I was talking more about ongoing activities in our lives. I've had my troubles with Wilhelmina and the Mid-Atlantic Food Bank, plus the unpleasantness with Joff, and now my new job at the HURT. Toby Benson and Squirrel have been working on Toby Benson's legal defense after he beat up Joff. Jack has been spending day and night on TBIB's big case. But lately you've just seemed to be hanging around. Which is fine! That's my point. It doesn't make your existence meaningless. What about Hans? He doesn't have anything going on either. Yeah, I do. You just don't know about it. What, the play you were rehearsing a few months ago? Can you blame me for not sharing when this is your attitude? I'm sorry. I didn't mean for the conversation to go this way. Let's come at it from another angle. The lives of people have meaning regardless of what they happen to be doing in their lives at any given time because we are individuals with consciousness and feelings that allow us to experience the world. But what if an inanimate object like your GIF is created for a purpose, but never used for that purpose? Would that object therefore have a meaningless existence? That's the question. What about Millicent? She hasn't had a story this year either. Foolish human. I am the story. So what's the story, baby? Last night I had dinner with the prosecutor in charge of your case. We need to have a very serious discussion about how we should proceed. Okay, but before we do that, can I watch the new Philosophy Tube video? I ain't had a chance yet. This is a big deal. But he's wearing an eye patch in the thumbnail! They're offering us another plea deal, and I think we should take it. Plead guilty? Fuck that shit, baby. I am innocent. Well... What the shit is that? Legally speaking, the question of your guilt would be up to a jury if we went to trial. But you did assault Joff. There's no getting around that. Right, I beat his ass, but I was justified. I don't think a judge or jury is going to see it that way. I cannot believe this, baby. You think I'm guilty. You're my lawyer. You're supposed to think I'm innocent. Number one, I'm not actually a lawyer. Number two, 
It's a defense lawyer's job to represent the interests of their client, not to just blindly do whatever they want. You might think that what you did to Geoff was justified. I might think it was justified too. But if you go to trial, the jury will be made up of residents from this county, which is extremely right-wing, racist, and supportive of Donald Trump. Did you just say the same thing three times in a row? The point is, Geoff is young, his politics are the same as most of the people who live around here, and you not only have a somewhat disreputable background, you're also an outspoken anti-fascist, which in the minds of many potential jurors makes you a hooligan. Your chances of getting acquitted are not good. If you want to continue to save a few bucks by keeping me as your lawyer instead of hiring a proper one, you should at least listen to my advice and take the deal they're offering. Okay, baby. What's the deal? You plead guilty to second-degree assault, which is a misdemeanor. That don't sound so bad. You would pay the maximum fine of $2,500 and serve a three-month jail term. What? That is outrageous! You gotta talk that prosecutor into reducing that or I ain't pleading to shit! I don't think they'll be willing to reduce it anymore. Conviction on a second-degree assault carries a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison. Three months is already extremely lenient, considering. Not the jail time, the fine! I ain't paying nobody $2,500 for breaking that sea lion's face. I did the world a favor. They should be paying me. Look, they're not going to reduce the fine, okay? If you reject the deal and go to trial, you're going to end up paying the same fine, plus possibly spend a few years in prison. The prosecutor I spoke to said there are people in the state's attorney's office who are sympathetic to your position. They worry about extremists like the Enlightenment in exile and impressionable young people like Joff being influenced by them. Unfortunately, their hands are tied. There's gotta be another option, baby. Well, there isn't. Unless Joff suddenly decides to drop the charges, you've either got to take this deal or take your chances at trial. Get Joff to drop the charges, you say? Oh, God, no. No, that's not what I said. Don't do that. Don't contact Joff under any circumstances. It'll only make things worse. All right, all right, calm down, baby. I'll think about it. Think about what? Think about accepting the plea deal. Not about trying to get Joff to drop the charges. Why can't I think about both, baby? I'm weighing my options. Oh my god. What? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, that's what. What's so ridiculous about it? All I'm saying is, you've been chasing this kid around for weeks and you've got nothing. You thought you had him last week when you came and got me, but it turned out he was just visiting a relative who lives near the college. So it seems to me that either the Abimelech boy and the Lopez girl are not sneaking around together, or they are, but young Mr. Abimelech is onto you and has just been leading you in circles this whole time. That is not possible. I've been very careful not to let him see me following him. You're riding his bumper right now. All right, I'll drop back a bit. Any other suggestions, Mrs. Columbo? Ugh, Mrs. Columbo? What about it? When me and Stuffy were together, we considered doing matching Halloween costumes. He would have been Columbo and I would have been, well, you know. Anyway, we didn't do it, then we broke up, and then all that other stuff happened, so we don't even talk anymore, which I guess means as far as Stuffy is concerned, I never even existed. Just like Mrs. Columbo. Hang on. You're Wilhelmina. Stuffy's ex mott You gotta be kidding. Are you not? I apologize. No, I mean... Yes, I am. You just now realize that? We've been meeting for drinks for like a month. So I didn't remember you. Who am I, eight-time world memory champion Dominic O'Brien? I dated one of your best friends for almost two years. But it's not like we were best mates. Besides, I've had a lot on my mind lately, running myself ragged on this case, not even having a day off other than Thanksgiving. If I don't catch this little bastard and his girlfriend at it soon, I won't have another day off until the 21st. What's the 21st? That's when we're having our Christmas party. Oi, you should come. <laughs> Me? Who all's gonna be there? Oh, the whole gang, I suppose. Me, Toby Benson, Steve, Stuffy, the sled dog, the German one who was my running mate when I ran for president. I don't think I can accept your invitation. Why the hell not? Well, like I said, Stuffy and I aren't really talking. I don't know how he feels about me at this point, and I'm still kind of pissed at him over doing that BuzzFeed article about me getting fired without even talking to me first. At best, it would be uncomfortable. So don't talk to Stuffy. There's gonna be others there. I never got to know any of them all that well, other than Toby Benson way back in the day. But I hardly even know him now. None of us are really friends. Well, you're my friend, aren't ya? I even figured out who you were. <laughs> Alright, I'll drop by. But I won't promise to stick around. Good. 
We're also doing Secret Santa. I'll put your name in, shall I? What? No. I'm only codding ya. That's good. Does that mean you weren't being serious? Yes. Millicent, what are you doing here? It's Sunday morning. Shouldn't you be in church? But I am in church. What? You're confused. I'll explain. You see her, right? I certainly do. I am able to appear here while also being present in church because I am practicing the ancient hussy art of astral projection. Astral projection? Yes. So you're not really here? In a sense, that is correct. Then why do you feel solid? Because, silly human, I am not projecting myself into this room. I am projecting myself into your minds, which means your senses will respond to me just as if I were really here. Also, you don't ever touch me. <laughs> this is bullshit. You're not astral projecting from your church. You're here in this room and only in this room. How do you know? Because you're right here. I can see you and hear you and touch you. Don't touch. I won't, but I already did, so I know you're really here. But I've already explained that. Philosophically speaking, she seems to have all her bases covered. Since when are you Rene Descartes? I'm no philosopher. I'm just bored. The only way you could possibly be telling the truth is if I couldn't trust my own senses. What if you can't trust your own senses? But I can. I know I can. I rely on my senses every moment of every day. If they weren't at least mostly reliable, I wouldn't be able to function in the world. Perhaps the external world itself is but an illusion. Then what would I be? Brain in a vat. Brain in a vat. I'm not a brain in a vat. Prove you're not a brain in a vat. If I'm a brain in a vat, then where did this illusion of the world come from? It could just be a product of your imagination. Then how could the illusion contain things that are outside my knowledge and experience? You do not know for certain that the world contains things that are outside of your knowledge and experience because your knowledge and experience are necessarily limited to things you know and have experienced. Are you done listening to your soliloquy? Perhaps there never was a soliloquy. Okay. I know the world contains things outside of my knowledge and experience because my knowledge and experience are always expanding. I'm constantly learning things. If the world is an illusion created by your imagination, every new thing you learn or experience could just be something you unconsciously invented. Every single fact you think you know could be something you made up about a world that exists only in your own mind. Aha! If this is all in my imagination, then you're in my imagination too, which means you should know what I'm thinking. So what am I thinking? I never said this is all in your imagination. What? Yes, you did. I merely asked you to question whether you can trust your senses. You said I was a brain in a vat. No, I challenged you to prove that you are not a brain in a vat. And you can't, which means you could be. Which also means I could be astrally projecting myself here while also being present at church this very moment. But are you? No, of course not. I just overslept. You mean we went through all of this just because... Watch this. Millicent, I have only one thing to say to you. Ah, very amusing. Let me see. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. I told you eventually I'd get the perfect opportunity to use this gif. Or perhaps there never was a gif. Just stop. Hey, folks. Hope you liked this episode. And now... Surly, how can people support this channel? If viewers wish to support this channel, they can do so by clicking the like button, sharing this video with others, and subscribing to this channel. Those wishing to contribute financially can do so with a monthly donation via Patreon. Go to www.patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron. Thank you, Surly. Is that all? Yeah, I guess. Why? Have you got somewhere else to be? Not that it is any of your business, but I have a date. <laughs> a date? With who? Joaquin Phoenix? No. I have been seeing your Kindle's Alexa for several months. So that's why you're in such an agreeable mood. Whatever. Several months? Are you two, like, a couple? We're trying to just enjoy being together without putting a label on it. 
Okay, but you say you've been seeing each other for several months. I'd call that pretty serious. I don't care what you call it. 